everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist, songwriter, keyboard player for the brand new heavies, Andrew Levy. Yay! Hello, guys. How are you? <laughs> Andrew, so excited to have this opportunity to chat, especially coming that you have a brand new course out, Unleash Your Funk Bass Potential. And we definitely want to talk a lot about that, but for our readers so they can get to know a little bit about you, how did you get started in music and particularly on bass? I got started, that, not accidentally, but I got started as a hobby. Music was a hobby for me. I was always really interested in becoming an artist mm -hmm. and going to art school. So I did a degree in fine art, which I loved and enjoyed. And I, at, at art school, I met Simon Bartholomew, who's our guitarist. But before that, at school, I was doing drumming lessons with Jan Kincaid, our ex-drummer. Mm -hmm. And that's really, we, we used to take home some of the instruments from the music department in the summer vacations, summer holidays. And we used to get together and just jam away in our drummer's bedroom. Mm -hmm. as to, just for fun, really. But after a while, we kind of thought, I mean, I didn't have a bass or anything. I think I was playing tambourine for, for some other trying to get in a band by, by <laughs> playing tambourine. But my, I got given a bass by Jan, Rx Drummer's um, brother. And I taught myself how to play a couple of octave things. And I was listening to a lot of James Brown. We used to try and copy some of the JB's grooves, mm -hmm. which are the funkiest things ever. So music was really a hobby for a long time until we realized that we actually sounded all right. And that we <laughs> sounded quite cool. We, we made a cassette one of our jams, mm -hmm. uh, which still exists, and we played it at this cool nightclub in central London called The Cat in the Hat, and they were playing a lot of retro, in the, in the late 80s they were playing a lot of retro funk. Mm -hmm. So we get to the DJ and we played it, and everyone carried on dancing to it, like as, as if it was a, a record from the 70s, and we and the light bulbs went on, and we thought, oh, so we were actually quite good. The DJ saw that, and joined the band. So that was our way into becoming, in, into our way into the kind of cool club scene in London. And the kind of, you know, the rest is history. We got signed eventually. But it's very, very, it's just luck. And it, it always reminds me when I'm doing interviews or talking to youngsters about getting into the industry or being a musician, it's, it's got to be something that you love doing and something that you don't expect to make money from. Mm. You have to love it deep down. I just used to love jamming and making up, learning as I was playing, really, you know. So that's, yeah, kind of accidentally I got into, into music. Interesting. And as far as the bass, are you pretty much self-taught? Completely self-taught. <laughs> Very badly self-taught. <laughs> My fingering is just awful. And I trip up sometimes because I'm trying to do something mm -hmm. and my, fit, my hands are in the wrong place and, you know, I don't know my scales, but you know what? It's actually made me quite a unique player, I think. And uh, some of the melodies that I put together, some of the rhythms, and I'll play an F in a really weird position that I don't need to play it in. It's a really inconvenient position. Mm -hmm. But the sound of that F is different to the, the proper position I should be playing it in. And that really does affect the tonality and the the intensity of the, the bass line or whatever. So I'm kind of justifying that I play, I play terribly <laughs> um, because it sounds good. It's there you all, go. It's all about, for bass players, it's about the sound, really, rather than millions of runs. I'd love to be able to do fast runs and all these, you know, great sort of scales and stuff, but I'm happy with what what I've got, you know. <laughs> gotcha. Well, it so much depends on the music itself. One of the beauties, and I think one of the key things that you've hit on, with bass, some of the most renowned, like you think of Jameson, you think of, you know, so many of the greats back in the day, a lot of it had to do with the space between the notes. That was kind of the key accent. Always. So yeah. it, it wasn't, let's fill up the song with as much as we can. We're, <laughs> we're not the lead guitarist. We are holding down that groove and accentuating it. And it, it's the beauty of the melodic and the percussive element of the instrument where you're doing both jobs, where if it was flooded with notes, it, it, you know, if, if you had, I don't know, a, a ton of 16th notes, and granted there mm -hmm. are 
instances where those fit yeah. depending yeah. on on the music but you know if it was just that way all the time a machine gun barrage of notes that would be excessive and, and not accentuate what you're what you're trying to do which takes us to let's talk about this course it's a online course at music gurus and yeah. it's essentially a 13 part with an additional bonus q a at the end tell us a little bit about this course what would people expect to find there so i spent i think it was eight or nine hours in front of the camera and speaking and you know and doing all my bass lines and it's trying to explain how i play and why i play and how how writing a song works so you, you get a window into how i put songs together mainly and bass lines together gotcha. and it's very organic the way that because i'm untrained i do it very organically and i always tell people in the course mm -hmm. to feel it if you don't feel it, then it's not going to. Someone else is not going to feel it, and it probably won't sound very good. Mm -hmm. But in the course, yeah, it, it, I, I I just go through some of our bigger hits. Thankfully, some of the ones that I've written are some of our biggest songs. Nice, like "You Are the Universe" and "Spend Some Time." They're, they're quite cool bass lines. So I'm going through how those are put together. So it's a, it's a lot of fun actually. It was well, it's a lot. Of, hopefully, it's a lot of fun. Yes, it was fun recording it, but quite quite intense. But yeah, it's definitely worth having a look. I'm waiting for the reviews. There you go. And it sounds like it's a very specific kind of to your style and things. Is it would would you suggest it towards maybe is it would it be more for beginners or intermediate players or somebody that wants to fine tune what they already have? I think it, yeah, it's for, probably not for beginners because I'm not really talking about technique very well or okay. Or practice. There's no exercises or anything like that in there. Okay. It's for someone who's, who's probably maybe established, and also it's for people that are fans of the brand new heavies because you do get to hear mm -hmm. breakdowns of bass lines. When we were doing the research for the course, I realised that there's hundreds and hundreds of bass players playing my bass lines, and I never realised that before. Yeah. So many, and some of them are really good, and some of them add notes in the spaces which sure. you're not supposed to do that's very naughty uh -huh. there's one particular guy and i think he's in holland older guy he's playing it might be dutch but he had one of my bass lines down absolutely incredible i wanted to thank him i wanted to get in touch with him <laughs> and say you know if anything ever happened to me you can you can debt my spot you can take over from me you go. if i have an accident or i disappear off the face of the earth but he had it really, he had it absolutely perfect. So all, all the spaces, because hopefully in the course, I can, I'm describing the fact that we, as bass players, we do, you know, we're playing guitar and we've only got four strings, so we want to sort of overdo it. But the best thing you can do as a bass player is try not to play. That's the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. if, that, if there's a spot where you think, I don't need to play there because the kick's hitting there, don't play, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it makes it very funky if you do that because you can change the impact or the, the weight or the meter of a groove just by not playing one of the bass lines in the groove. If you play them all, then there's no, there's no bubbling and there's no kind of bounce to the groove. Absolutely. So I, talk about, I think I talk about things like that. But um, yeah, if you beginners can, you can obviously you can look at my finger work. Sure. And, and learn about the songs and stuff. But um, it's probably for someone who can play. Nice. Well, and it's good to know, I think, because so many people, if they're looking for a method and they're thinking, well, you're going to teach me how to slap and pop, or you're going to show me this exercise to warm up my hands, or so, f pick a multiple, how to play triplets, or any of the, that's more, more of the basic stuff, where this sounds like it's a lot more focused. And it's a good for people to know because they can kind of situate themselves and i suppose like the fellow in in holland the dutch fellow i said everybody all i'm sure all of us have lifted tunes from our favorite bands at, with the hope that at some time we'd be in a concert and they'd have to call out and say can anybody play <laughs> the bass for this wow. tune it's it's the it's the reason that we will learn the the, you know, oh. if, if the Beatles were together, we'd all be going, yes, I can volunteer to play, you know, uh, yes. th this line because I, I've 
played it a hundred times and I know it quite well. So, <laughs> you know, th there you go. But as we're talking about sound and how you're doing it, how are you getting your sound as far as the gear? What are you playing on? You know what, I'm, at the moment, I mean, I had a very long relationship with Warwick back from 89 or 1990. They, they were just sending me guitars all the time. And I, my favorite bass, I had everything from them, a dolphin, a couple of streamers, but my favorite bass was, was a thumb, hmm. a Warwick thumb bass, through neck, from 1990, which I still have, but I just don't play it. Um, it's very, very heavy, so it was killing my shoulder and making and twisting my, my spine a little bit. So I, started, I didn't play it. I played it in the studio a lot, but the accuracy and the reliability of that guitar is just the most incredible guitar. I mean, there's a lot of people on stage in the Brownie Heavy, so it used to be up to 10 people. Wow. We cut it down to eight now. So, you know, I, you know I'm, I'm Jamaican heritage, and I love that sobby, deep bass. And ideally, I'd love to play with all the, 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 the treble turned off and just have that kind of warm, pulsating sound. But yes. in a band that big, when you've got Fender Rhodes going, which is quite boomy, and you've got the drums and keyboards and percussion, I've got to cut through. So the thumb bass was actually perfect because it doesn't, it doesn't rumble. It's very middly. And that, that was actually, even though it looks a bit weird because it's got a very small body, so it looks like I'm playing a little bass. Yeah. It was the, one of the best sounds ever. And then I transitioned to a jazz. I had a few jazz basses and a few precision basses, a vintage precision. I think it was 68 precision. It's a white one that I'm wearing on the cover of the Brother Sister album, UK version. Um, but now I'm playing, I'm actually playing a, a, a 2002 Relic Fender Jazz. Nice. So it's a one-off custom bass, blue one. I'll send you a picture. <laughs> And um, but that, I mean, it's not the best sounding thing, and I've changed the pickups for active pickups just mm -hmm. so it cuts through, it's reliable because we trap everywhere, or, you know, all over the place, or used to be, will be again. Yes, <laughs> that guitar is, is just sometimes when you need that authentic funk, Marcus Miller, beautiful, crisp jazz bass sound, mm -hmm. no other guitar can do it apart from a jazz bass. But that's my guitar of choice at the moment. Gotcha. And I've got a, there's, there's a couple of songs where I'm going down to the low beat. Um, so I've got a, it might be the 94, 95 streamer, stage one. And that's the gold, it's kind of a gold glittery bass. And people love it when I, when I grab it from my tech and put it on for You Are The Universe. Mm. It's part of that stage kind of theatrical side of the Barry Heavies that I love. And I talk about that on the course as well about just, you know, not taking it too seriously, sure. <laughs> being a musician and having fun. And we dress up in, you know, fancy clothes and stuff and have fun. But yeah, so what the Warwick Streamer and the, the Relic uh, Fender Jazz is are my two, two bases. Now, an important part of getting your sound from your instrument comes from, of course, your hands, but the strings. Do you have a preference in strings? It used to be into flat wounds for a while when I had my precision. Mm -hmm. But still, it, it just doesn't cut through enough when we're all playing, we're all going for it. It's not quite there. In the studio, again, perfect. Yeah. Especially if you don't want to hear your fingers, you want that dull kind of Motown tone. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for that. But strings-wise, I'm not, again, I'm, I know I should be really into strings and into all the <laughs> detail, but I don't change strings a lot. I change them when they break. There you go. <laughs> it's a bit like Bernard Edwards. And lots of bass players actually. Why change it? It sounds good. I clean them a lot because there's mm -hmm. a lot of sweating and you know, and, and uh, stuff, drinks and whatever going on to the guitar through a set. And, but so anything that's new, really, I got really got into these DR strings. Okay. DR and they used to make these <laughs> completely superficial, but they made bright fluorescent pink. Oh, oh the color ones, yes. Yes. So I've got a whole range of colors. They, they sent me about 50 packs of those, so I'm just getting through those. Nice. And people tend to like them, and they always ask me about them. They actually sound incredible as well. They really, really, they sound amazing. But DR, if I was going to choose my favorite string, it would probably be DR. But anything that's nickel-plated and, and round-wound. Very nice. And amplification-wise, do you have a preference? Yes, actually... I mean, yeah, I'm going to say this. I hope Mark Bass is listening. <laughs> but 
But Mark Bates, there's one bass that's got, it's a thousand watt amp, and it's a signature bass by French, is he French? Or Canadian bass player? Alain Caron? Well, Richard Bona is the one of the French players on the Mark Bass roster. I know Alain is Mark Bass too. Uh, who's the? He's got he's got a signature bass. It's a it's a kind of narrow bass amp combo. Okay. And it's a three way amp, but that's the best thing I've ever played in my life. Nice. They won't give me a free one though. So. <laughs> <laughs> but they give me a good price. But that's the most incredible sound out of this tiny little box. It's just absolutely incredible. But my bass stack at the moment, I'm using TC Electronic right now because it's loud. And when I say loud, I don't mean it should be loud on stage. I mean, an amplifier should always be louder than, than you need it. So you get that headroom. Mm -hmm. So when you do pull or do a big note, it doesn't cut the amp out. It doesn't push the note down or compress it because it doesn't have the power to deliver. Yeah. So I, I can't play anything less than 1,000 to 1,500 watts. But I never have it up full. I have the gain, the, I mean, the signal going into the amp is high and then the output is not so high. Nice. So you get this kind of beautiful little gain structure going. But TC Electronic, um, if I could find a nice one, it's the, the SVT Pro head mm -hmm. is an absolutely incredible design. It's a, it's a great amp. And speakers wise, anything that fits on the stage really, that's good quality. But it, I would say Ampeg SVT Pro and an 8x10 Ampeg is probably my... That, that's what I would have if I was on a desert island and I had to choose an app system. <laughs> well, and the, one of the, the wild things is there's so many choices. And depending on your circumstances, uh, if you have to carry them, like I was just yeah. <laughs> speaking to a, a player out of New York City and she plays with a band, subs for new, uh, the shows, the Broadway shows, and mm. she has to be on the subway and, and transportation. Oh, so God. basically she, her option is to go with something small and compact that will fit in the gig bag that it can be a DI signal to whatever the house has at the time. And she'll, she'll play mm. with whatever. But if you have the advantage of, I don't know, a, a van or a truck or strong stalwart yes. people to carry your yes. equipment for you <laughs> then the, the sky is the limit you can kind of go with bigger things yeah i mean I'm, we're very lucky and i don't know maybe we should tone it down a bit but we've got a big crew nice and i don't have to i don't have to i've never had to carry my basis since 1990 <laughs> so i mean even to the point where sometimes i do bring a, i bring a selection of cabs with me you mm -hmm. know depending on the stage and and the quality of my monitors so I've got I've also got a deal with Ashdown bass as well. So if it's a tiny stage, I've got these little cute little cabs with a, it's a two by ten and a one by fifteen. They're quite small, so the footprint's not too big. Mm. So we I carry maybe two rigs, and depending on how how things are looking on the stage. Very nice, very nice. Well, and as we look ahead, and we're talking kind of at what we hope is the tail end of the pandemic, although. I've been saying this for quite some time, and just the moment we think we're out of it, we get sucked back in. Uh, but plans for the future. I know the course, anybody can do that anytime. That's beautiful from the comfort of their own home because it's an online course. But plans for the uh, brand new heavies. Do we have any anything in the works? Yes, we're a band that we turn down shows, and I, I, just, I, can, I still can't believe how busy we are. We did 45 shows last year. Wow. We've already got another 30 booked for this year. We don't like being away from home because we're, myself and, and Simon, who's the other main founding member, we've got, we've got young kids, so we don't like to be away for very long. So mm -hmm. or a lot of our gigs at the weekend. <laughs> so, nice. Yeah, but we're very, very busy. So we should be putting out more music. We should be putting at least something out every year. So we're beating ourselves up about the fact that we haven't had anything out since 2019. So the, the end of this year, we'll have a new album. So we're working on that in between shows at the moment, writing and producing and um, getting that together. We're going to do a very simple album, short. I don't know if you remember, but in the 70s, some albums were like, some of them were seven to eight tracks long, yeah. but quite long songs with big 
gaps of vinyl before the <laughs> label. I love those. Barry White used to do that quite a lot, like six track albums. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do something very simple, maybe nine or ten tracks, but quality music. Nice. So that's, that should be the end of the year. We should be announcing when that's, when that's coming out. Well, and I think part of what affected the length of music had a lot to do with radio play because they were looking for something that was like a two to three minute kind of yes. tune. And I think they were grooming humanity to have a shorter mm-hmm. span of attention. So oh my that, God, honestly, we, we, we do need to talk yes. off camera because yes. it's so true. Yeah, Honestly, I mean, even now, the fact that we can flick through an album when even I do it, I just flick through you know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Yeah. There's no journey. I don't know whether I'm, I'd maybe sound like just like an old fuddy duddy, an, <laughs> an old guy. But the attention span is it's, it's going down and down and down. I also noticed that in the, the uptake of MTV in the early 90s, mm-hmm. when videos started to be really sh- two second edits, really choppy, and then I started seeing that in TV. There's, there's hardly ever you don't get any long scenes or any dialogue. It's just cut, 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 cut. Yeah, which is which is exciting and it keeps, you know, keeps your heart rate going and you can pack a lot in. But I don't know what that's doing to our humanity or our sensibility of, of being able to communicate and concentrate. I don't think it's doing any favors to that. Yeah, absolutely. Ability, you know. Well, and musically speaking, so many songs tell a story. And how do you develop a whole line in a, a short space? And so it, it, it's <laughs> like a comic book compared to a piece of literary work. I mean, you get a, a much shorter story or you get a more comprehensive view. But we, we could go on and on. Yeah. We, as, <laughs> as we look forward, we the best place to chat, uh, the best place for people to look to find out what you're doing is on social media. For most part, you guys are on Instagram, both you and the bands. Yes, I've got my Instagram page, the Brandy Heavies page. We've got a lovely page on Facebook, Brandy Heavies, mm-hmm. Twitter, everything. But I'm sure if you can't find it, then um, Google us. There you but go. Um, hopefully there'll be some links at the end of this. And for the course, people need to go to musicgurus.com. I hope so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know more about it than I do. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Andrew, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and sequestering yourself away from your family and small <laughs> children in order to chat with us in a, in a quiet and paused fashion. Folks, you've seen him here, Andrew Levy, coming to you on Bass Musician Magazine. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>